Good afternoon, everyone. We're going to get started. So my name is Beth Carol Horrocks. I'm a member of the Ephemeris Society Board and also on the Conference Planning Committee. And I would say that if the talks this afternoon go anywhere near as well as they did this morning, we're in for a great afternoon. So, so our first speaker is Kenneth Flory. Um, he's a, a name very well known in our house, not because either of us collects suffrage, but because uh, he's, we see him in every book and paper fair we go to, and also because my husband collects mid-19th century political material, especially Abraham Lincoln. So Ken Flory's name has appeared in our checkbook register many times. <laughs> so he's going to be speaking today about the English suffrage movement, ephemera of militancy and response. And it comes from over 40 years right, of collecting and writing about the, the topic of suffrage. Uh, he's a retired English professor, English and literature professor from Southern Connecticut and has been collecting, as he describes, has been an avid collector of suffrage material, suffrage ephemera and memorabilia since the 1980s. So there's no one better to speak about this uh, topic than Ken. So he's also published on the topic and speaks frequently about his collection and other issues related to the history of suffrage. And we are really glad to have him here with us this afternoon. <laughs> Beth was trying to take my notes away from me, <laughs> uh, probably to shorten my uh, presentation. <laughs> Beth has introduced me uh, before, and I must say that I'm so pleased that when she was given this assignment, she didn't run away screaming, and I think that's a, a, a wonderful, wonderful compliment. <laughs> so, uh, when Barbara, uh, first came to me and asked me to submit a proposal, and I suggested the English suffrage movement, uh, I could see her eyebrows were raised a little bit, you know. Why English? Why not American? Uh, mainly because I wanted to. Uh, <laughs> but, but I've done many, many a discussion on American uh, memorabilia, and I thought it'd be nice to have a change, plus the fact that I looked at the topic, uh, the general topic for uh, these presentations, and the word conflict kept on coming up uh, over and over and over again. And uh, certainly there is enough conflict in the American movement, but the English movement in terms of conflict and militancy far, far surpasses the American movement. I mean, we can talk about uh, arson, we can talk about bombing, we can talk about trying to uh, derail uh, uh, railroads. And for my friend, a uh, close friend I have who's a golfer, uh, to him, the worst thing that the English militants did was to pour acid on golf greens. So uh, he was very upset about that. Uh, so anyway, so that's the background that I, uh, I'm going to give you. And then I understand I have but 30 minutes to, uh, in which to give this uh, presentation. The timekeeper today, for me, is uh, someone you, most of you know, Diane DeBlois. And Diane, if you know her, she's a wonderful, nice, humanitarian, kind person, <laughs> except if you go over your time limit. Then you're in trouble. And uh, there have been all kinds of rumors that I've heard about uh, people who have been hospitalized and, uh, and things like that. But, but we'll see. So anyway, let me introduce you. Uh, this is a kind of background, badges and colors. One thing I like about the English movement, uh, in addition to the history, of the color and the fact that there's just so many female artists and a few male artists that are involved in all of this. And this certainly surpasses, I, I think, the, um, the American movement. Uh, there were a number of different suffrage organizations throughout all of England. These are the three major ones. And all of the organizations, all the major ones, all the minor ones, all had their special colors. 
And color, I think, is more important in terms of the English movement than it is in terms of the American movement. Uh, Americans, the, uh, the main uh, organization, uh, NASA, uh, had yellow as a kind of unofficial color, but yellow by itself is certainly not as spectacular as some of the colors that you, know, you may see here. On the left uh, is a, a woman called uh, uh, Millicent uh, Garrett, <coughs> Uh, 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 Fossil, and the, a couple of things about this. She was the head of the National Union of Women Suffrage Societies, which by far was the largest suffrage organization in all of England. Now, if you don't know too much about the English movement, you may never have heard of them. And the reason why you may never have heard of them, despite the fact that they were large, was the fact that they were non-militant. So they just did not get the kind of uh, publicity or the headlines in periodicals that some of the other organizations may have. This does not mean that they weren't effective. And uh, Mrs. Fawcett, who was married, by the way, to a member of parliament who was blind, Henry Fawcett, uh, her daughters were brilliant. Uh, the, but they both went on to first at their respective you know, universities. And as I said, she was a tireless worker. And some people credit her more with bringing full suffrage to women in England than they do to the Pankhurst. You see here a cabinet photo of her. One of the things that differs where the uh, English uh, movement differs from the American movement is there are much more photographs of various leaders. Uh, in America, we tended to get away from the whole idea of doctrine of you know, a cult of personality. You do find material with pictures of Elizabeth Cady Stanton and Susan B. Anthony and a few others. The Stanton and Anthony pictures that you see mostly are memorial pictures. Uh, you sometimes find them on uh, buttons and things like that, but again, they tend to be more memorial. The idea is not so much the person, but the idea is the movement itself and the ideas behind the movement that, that are important more in America than in England. To the far right uh, is a picture that some of you may recognize. Let me see if I can get my... Uh, that's Emmeline Pankhurst, and she is probably the most well-known of all of the suffragists in England. By the way, the uh, term suffragist and suffragette, suffragist was, is the formal term, the correct term. People were so upset with uh, Emmeline Pankhurst and her organization that they start, started using the diminutive suffragette. Uh, and uh, her organization, the WSPU, embraced it. You know, it's a kind of in-your-face thing. You call us suffragettes, okay, this is what we are. And uh, uh, today, I think uh, uh, if you go to England, if you uh, go to a show, you ask a postcard dealer, you, you want, uh, do you have any you know, uh, uh, suffrage items? They'll say, oh, you mean suffragette, suffragette. Uh, so that's the term that's commonly used, but suffragist is the uh, 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 most important. A uh, couple of other things, the uh, NUWSS, uh, their colors were red, white, and green. Uh, they, uh, again, enjoyed the fact that they were non-militant, that they were law-abiding, and there you see photographs of them in some pictures holding up signs saying law-abiding suffragist. Not suffragette, law-abiding suffragist. Uh, the Pankhurst, uh, uh, on, again, on the end, Emmeline Pankhurst, she formed the Women's Social and Political Union uh, in her hometown of Manchester, uh, Connecticut. And in 1903, she met with a couple of people, her daughters, uh, uh, there's Sylvia Pankhurst, uh, Adela Pankhurst, and Christabel. Christabel is probably the most important one in terms of the history of, of the suffrage movement. Christabel more or less 
took over from Emmeline uh, towards the end of the uh, movement days there. Uh, Emmeline Pankhurst's health was, uh, was problematic in part because of some of the things that she suffered for in prison when she went on hunger strikes. The pamphlet that you see to the right is rare. And it's rare because uh, uh, Emmeline came to the United States several times during the campaign in England and once after the campaign was over. She gave speeches all over the place. And one of the things that she did, basically why she came over here, was to fundraise for the en English movement. Uh, their colors are purple, green, and white, which uh, a woman who worked with her, Emmeline, another Emmeline, Emmeline Pepic Lawrence, uh, uh, codified as white equals hope, excuse me, white equals purity of the suffragists, uh, green equals hope, and purple equals the royal blood that is in, in all, of, all of their veins. Colors are more important for the WSPU than any other organization. And they were identified sometimes, not so much even by the name of the organization, but by the colors that they wore. And every time they had a rally, they always say, where are the colors, where are the colors, where are the colors? Uh, and uh, so much so that if you pick up a postcard, England, uh, all of England was aware of these colors. Whether or not you were pro-suffragist, anti-suffragist, you didn't uh, give it down, uh, you were aware of the colors. So all you had to do to show that someone was involved in the movement uh, and you do a picture was to portray them wearing uh, uh, these three colors. The one in the center, and the reason why I put, put this in the center, not because it's more important, but be simply because of symmetry. Uh, Mrs. Despard. She was a member of Pankhurst's organization, but in 1907, she got disgusted because she felt that Emmeline Pankhurst was far, far, far too autocratic uh, in her methods, that uh, Pankhurst, I think the year before, had ripped up the constitution of the WSPU, and basically Pankhurst said, the constitution is whatever I say it is. Uh, she could, didn't like that. She was militant also, but uh, unlike the WSPU, the militancy did not extend to destruction of property. Uh, you know, in other words, maybe uh, you might uh, disobey police orders, uh, but you certainly did not plant bombs. You certainly did not burn down churches the way the WSPU later did. All right, uh, and their uh, colors were uh, green, gold, and white. All right, the next, uh, okay. All right, the, the coming out party of the WSPU was on, in January, excuse me, in June 21st, 1908. They had, they had demonstrations before, but this was the first major, major demonstration that they had. The crowd, uh, you can see uh, uh, the postcard in the, in the lower right-hand corner. The crowd was estimated to be anywhere from about 350,000 to 500,000 people, women ma uh, mainly. Uh, and this, this Two things that was uh, a problem here. The WSPU was already noted for some of its militant activities, mainly breaking of windows and things like throwing rocks at windows. Again, it got far, far more destructive and militant uh, you know, uh, uh, later on. But the fact that you could have 350,000, 500,000 women out was just a testimony to, uh, to how popular not only the movement was, but how popular the WSPU was at, 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 this, at this point in, in, in time. Uh, in, the, in America, I, I'd say we had our demonstrations also. The biggest one was in 1911, just prior to the uh, President Wilson's inauguration. Uh, it was, I won't say unusual, but it was difficult for women at this time to demonstrate publicly. 
because the whole idea was, you know, there was a man's place and a woman's place. The outside, the streets, were a man's territory. Uh, uh, the public place was a man's place. And the fact that women would come and occupy a man's place for a major demonstration was frightening to a number of men who saw this as a kind of, you know, turnover or, or, or a revolution, which they were terribly afraid of. The middle postcard there shows Flo Dr uh, 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 Drummond. Uh, and uh, Mrs. Drummond, the Flora Drummond, Mrs. Drummond is on a boat there out on the Thames outside the House of Commons. And very defiantly, she is inviting the members of the House of Commons to come to this demonstration on, on, on June 21st. And again, that kind of defiance, you don't necessarily have to be a law-breaking uh, suffragist. Uh, but again, this was a kind of uh, a defiant act. The uh, napkin on the left was made by uh, Sarah Burgess, who ran a kind of uh, a souvenir shop, the kind of shop that you would go today to get a bowling trophy or something like that. And you know, she, she wanted to make some money. And every time there's something major going on in uh, London, she made a, uh, a napkin. And I have about, you know, in my collection, about six or seven different napkins that she'd made for different demonstrations and for uh, uh, different organizations. The WSPU was very upset because if you'll notice what, it, uh, what this says, if I can get my, uh, it says official program, you notice that? Nothing official about it. And they, they were kind of ticked off. And why were they ticked off? Well, they were being exploited, you know? Uh, she was calling it an official program, she was making money off them, and the WSPU didn't see uh, 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 any of the proceeds. Though they did, however, say, well, you know, in a way this is good because it does show how popular our movement has become that people now are making money off it. All right, we will, the next one, this, the, uh, next year, Prince's Skating Exhibition. Now remember, the WSPU is becoming more and more notorious. Uh, they're doing more and more acts of destruction, uh, but nevertheless, they are extremely popular. This exhibition, uh, at, uh, the Princess Skating Exhibition in, Knights, in Knightsbridge, if you, again, postcards, if you will, the one to the far right is the exhibition hall where vendors set up displays, where there were banners designed by Sylvia Pankhurst, uh, Emmeline's daughter, the artist, uh, tremendous artists, wonderful artists, that decorated the side of the hall. Uh, again, various vendors. The, uh, I don't know why I have two postcards here of the orchestra, not orchestra, the band, that Mary Lee, and she is the woman, let's see if I can pick her out. the far left, Mary Lee, uh, she was arrested a couple of times, spent time in Holloway. Uh, the girls' band was something, the uniforms are, strike me as very interesting. There is a man, and I'll talk about him later on if I have the time, Simon Webb, who just hates the suffragist movement. And he's written several books recently and he uh, says that many of them were actually fascists and that fascists love uniforms. And therefore, you know, she dressed herself up in this uniform and dressed the you know, all-girl all band in, in uniforms also. The uh, picture in the center, uh, uh, Mary Brackenberry, uh, that is not a scene of a woman in prison. That is the scene of a woman at this exhibition where they built a mock prison cell to show the public what the suffragists were, were, uh, would go through. 
and uh, periodically what they would do, they, you know, they would ch different suffragists would come in and they would do duties such as uh, scrubbing the floors and, and uh, what, what, what they had to do. Uh, I won't go into all of this stuff. I just, uh, I just don't have the time. The next one, Lisa, uh, over here, uh, uh, will recognize this. They had a tea room at this exhibition where you could buy a 22 set uh, tea set. And on, uh, and printed on this, it was uh, done by Williamson's, uh, printed on this was something called the Angel of Freedom, which is a design that uh, Sylvia Pankhurst created. She created a couple of other logos for the movement, but this is one of the most uh, 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 famous. I know in this country of only two complete tea sets, the first one, Lisa Baskin over there, and now it's at Duke right now, is it, is it not? I think you not only have a complete tea set, but you have extras that go along with this, and you know, quite impressive. I'm not aware, to be quite frank, of any complete set now in England. This one I was very fortunate to get uh, in auction, and the owner was the family of a famous photographer. Uh, uh, his name is Curran, it's not spelled Curran, his name is Curran, Ferdinand uh, uh, Curran. But anyway, you could buy this at the exhibition. You could buy it from the WSPU headquarters uh, uh, later on. Uh, the WSPU periodically would declare a truce. You know, they kept on their campaign of militancy. The biggest part of the campaign was after 1912, and I'll, I'll, I'll get into that. In, in just a moment. But they took time off. There were uh, bills that went through uh, Parliament called uh, the Conciliation Bills, one, two, and three. And during the, uh, when Parliament was debating on these uh, bills, they held off on the militancy because they just did not want to turn <laughs> off the uh, 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 people who were to, were to be uh, voted on this. But they, uh, the, during the 1911, the coronation was actually on June 22nd. So they had this huge, massive parade a couple of days before the actual uh, coronation or in order of uh, King George V. You'll see that their handbill is in the colors of purple, green, and white. The official, and this is an uh, official program, is also in the colors of purple, green, and white. And to the right are several postcards. I have you know, numerous postcards of, of, of this uh, uh, procession. Uh, the, one of the things about uh, postcards is that postcards, if you're interested in suffrage and interested in English suffrage movement, you definitely, definitely, definitely have to collect their postcards. They had pho uh, photographers all over the place, uh, photographing virtually everything that, that went on, and including a lot of the militancy and a lot of uh, the aftermath of, of a lot of the bombings. Right. Now, demonstration leaflets. Again, this is ephemera. I'm getting more and more interested in some of these leaflets, simply because the colors uh, that are involved in them. Again, the purple, green, and white. American leaflets, as instructive as they may be, lack the kind of aesthetics that one finds in, uh, in many of the, uh, of, of the English leaflets. I put one of them here that's not WSPU. This one here, this is from the NUWSS. Occasionally, they would come out with a color leaflet also, but mainly, most of them were in nondescript, you know, black and white. The uh, icon in here is another one of uh, Sylvia Pankhurst's creation, and it's called the Sower, the Sower. The one down here, this protest meeting for uh, uh, William Ball against the inhumane treatment of William Ball, 
who was William Ball? Well, nobody in the suffrage movement had ever heard of the guy. He was not a member of the WSPU. He couldn't be because uh, admission was restricted to women only. They did not want men in there, not that they were necessarily anti-male, but they felt that if men were part of the organization, they would want to take the organization over, and they wanted this to be a pure, purely woman's uh, 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 organization. William Ball, at any rate, uh, he said, I'm going to do all kinds of things. I support the movement. And so he was put in jail, and of course one of the first things he did was to go on a hunger strike. The authorities had several different ways of combating hunger strikes. And one of them with uh, Ball is declare, well, any man who goes on a hunger strike for women's suffrage has got to not have all his faculties up there. He must be insane. So they institutionalized him in what was then called an insane asylum without telling his wife. And eventually, you know, he died. Uh, and uh, so that was what this was all about. Uh, let's see, go, go back. Yeah, okay. One of the main differences between the American movement and the English movement in terms of ephemera was that the English movement brought in m far more artists than you find in the American movement, far more artists. And you do not find in the American movement much in the way of color posters. You can find posters, there's plenty of them, but you know, not color, not graphic posters. The few that you can find, ma many of them are done by Rose O'Neill, and those of you who you know, know your American cultural history, Rose O'Neill was the uh, designer and, uh, of the Cupid dolls. And she was an ardent uh, uh, feminist. There were two organizations in England, women artists, devoted to the movement. There was the uh, 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 Artists Suffrage League, and there was the Suffrage Atelier. The Artists Suffrage League did most of their work for the NUWSS, and the Atelier did most of their work for the uh, WFL, uh, the Charlotte Despard uh, movement. As far as the number of posters are concerned, uh, Lisa uh, Tickner wrote an excellent, excellent book uh, published by the University of Chicago Press uh, that deals with English art for the movement. And in this, she tracks down approximately 75 different posters that were done, and she tries to track down the, you know, the location of each. Uh, unfortunately, you know, she, go, she knows the museums quite well. Uh, some of these are in the hands of collectors, and uh, she doesn't name a any of the collectors. Um, uh, but these, these are good. The, um, the one on the left, I purchased in America, and I wonder how on earth did a rare poster like that come in America to be able to be sold? Well, the, the answer is simply this. Uh, some of these organizations had an excess of posters, so they shipped them to America. They sold them uh, in, in America, and this is one of those posters that was, uh, that was shipped uh, uh, to America. All right. Uh, now, this one, the rush uh, on the House of Commons, 1908, one of the first major, major demonstrations, uh, illegal demonstrations, the women wanted to rush the House of Commons because a suffrage bill was being debated. So they came out with this leaflet telling people in, all, uh, in London there was going to be you know, this major, major, major push to rush the House of Commons, get inside the House of Commons, and try to uh, uh, per persuade uh, some of the legislators to vote for it. Unfortunately, the police got a hold of one of these posters, or actually leaflets, and were quite prepared 
So in, uh, I think by the, uh, when they did rush the House of Commons, there were 5,000 policemen in, in attendance to make sure that nothing went on. Basically, nothing too violent occurred uh, during this particular rush, although two years later, and I'll get into it in just a second, there was a major, major problem. This one here, the, the poster I'm quite pleased about, because, oh, not pleased, but uh, uh, I got it uh, when I bought a bunch of ephemera at an, an auction from an English house, and this was included in it, and apparently the person who did the cataloging was not aware of its significance. You'll find this poster listed in uh, Professor June Purvis's uh, book on uh, the biography of uh, Christabel Pankhurst. And again, the, uh, the poster or this flyer was used at the trial of the suffragists who had organized the entire campaign. And they were, and, and they were put in jail. Uh, the one on the far right is something that comes from the London Illustrated News, which did numerous, numerous, uh, uh, I, I'd say photographic, not photographic, but artistic renditions of some of the major uh, uh, demonstrations that were going on in London at the time. This one here, Mural Matters, the Australian suffragette. Australia was probably the first country, uh, English-speaking country, to give women the right to vote in 1902. So here, all this stuff is going on in England, and Mural Matters is a you know, uh, big suffrage sympathizer. And so she said, well, there's no, uh, what can I do in Australia? I'm gonna go over to you know, England. And she became quite a uh, cause celebre uh, there. This one here to the left, again from the Illustrated uh, News. It doesn't identify her, but it's, uh, it is her. What she did, she went to Parliament while it was going on. You had a visitor's section, which was sealed off from the actual floor by this grill. So what she did, she brought along some handcuffs. She handcuffed herself to this grill. The key, where was the key? Well, legend has it, and I can't verify it, but you know, legend has it that she somehow dropped it uh, in, in, in her blouse. And, so, and at, at that time, uh, you know, no one you know, felt that they could uh, do anything about it. What they finally did to get her off was to take down this section of the grill. And then you know, took her away, and I guess eventually you know, they, uh, uh, they, they took uh, you know, the handcuffs off. Uh, I am friends with uh, Francis Bedford, who was an ex-MP uh, from Australia, member of parliament. And I asked her about this, and she said, they don't have the, this particular section. No one knows where that is. But they did find in storage other sections of the grill, which they now have on public display. Uh, the photograph in the middle here is of Muriel Matters. Here is a postcard. One of the things about English postcards, if you collect postcards, so many of them have specific references to specific events in a way that we do not find in America. Uh, and this one here, uh, let me see if I can read it to you. The grill, there's a shell here, and then it says underneath it, not part of the commons. So this is the gallery that they now place it in, not the gallery in the, in the House of Commons. And you know, obviously the English had to know enough to catch this allusion. To the right, is an allusion to another one of her adventures. She and a couple of other suffragists decided, well, one of these, uh, why don't we rent an airship, fly above Parliament, and drop all of these leaflets, and you know, spread the word. Well, they did. Uh, now, there's different, uh, uh, different, not, uh, different versions of the story, I'm gonna say. It was, not the best of, are you giving me a, I gotta go, oh my lord. Uh, 
all right, well, uh, it was raining, the uh, uh, posters got yeah. wet, and what, what happened is they, uh, they, they almost dropped like bricks, you know, on, on uh, people below. Another version was that the wind came along and simply blew them off, off track. All right. Um, this, in 1912, after the third uh, consolation bill failed, women were furious, suffragists were furious, and they went on a window-breaking uh, excursion throughout uh, one of the London streets. They were arrested. The, this toffee hammer that you see, they used toffee hammers, and this toffee hammer that you see votes for women. This was given to the women who broke windows and were arrested, and when they got out of prison, they were given this as a, a, as a souvenir. All right, uh, well, all right. Uh, metamorphic, I don't know if, how many of you collect metamorphic pieces. Arrests were made. Christabel Pankhurst, Emmeline's daughter, was supposed to be arrested. She was not at headquarters when the police arrived. And she, was, uh, she found out about this. She disguised herself as a nurse, was taken to a nursing home with a sympathetic manager, and then escaped across the channel into England, where she's, uh, excuse me, to France, where she stayed for two years. And the, uh, this card shows the elusive Christabel, and there were police who were uh, rushing to get her, and then, uh, you know, they, uh, they, 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 they fail. All right. Um, suffragists and ar uh, arson. I don't have time to gi uh, give you the background of this, but from 1912 on, the real, real major stuff began. Suffragists burnt churches to the ground. They burnt private homes of influential politicians to the ground. They uh, went after sporting venues, uh, parks, sporting parks, burnt them to the ground. Uh, ho hotels, they burnt to the ground. The one in the lower right, five, okay. Uh, <laughs> all right, all right. You want here, anti-suffrage postcards. I'll just tell you uh, the one in the, uh, uh, the top uh, center I love. Here, a suffragist is so frightening that even the devil has to run away from her. <laughs> All right, uh, more. Uh, this is hunger strikes. I don't have to, they won't let me uh, uh, go into the hunger strikes. This, I, I did want to get to. People who underwent hunger strikes got what was called the Hunger Strike Medal, which had their names engraved on the back. This is one to Lavender Guthrie, and on the side in the silk, uh, inscribed in the silk, which is you can barely see, was a little uh, a biography. So this was uh, given to Lavender Gulf Guthrie. At the time when I purchased this in auction, I had to have a Hunger Strike Medal. I just had to. And, you know, you don't see them very often. I got this. I didn't know who the heck Lavender Guthrie was at the time. I really didn't. Uh, and uh, I was hoping, you know, I liked a famous suffragist, but I figured any hunger strike medal that they got would be in a museum locked away, you know, uh, forever. Well, a, a couple of years ago, a friend of mine in England who runs a blog did some research on Lavender Guthrie. And it's, uh, it's a quite... Uh, it's quite a story. It's a sad story, to tell you the truth. Lavender Guthrie, she went on a hunger strike. When she came out, she apparently dropped out of the movement. To support herself, she became an actress, but I could not find uh, examples of many plays in which she uh, uh, was an actress in. The rumor was, and it's probably true, to support herself, she became a prostitute. One day, the police were called to her flat. She had committed suicide by taking an excess of Vernal. And the reason why she took Vernal, it was uh, an opiate, uh, because uh, when you are force-fed, it can sometimes ruin the lining of your esophagus. And she was in extreme pain, so she was taking this for pain. Uh, so she committed suicide. Uh, she, uh, you know, 
she uh, left a note so we know uh, uh, that it was suicide, not an accidental overdose. I have a copy of the police, an interview with the police chief afterwards, who pointed to this specific medal and said, this is the reason why she committed suicide. And why, you might ask. Well, in his opinion, that the suffrage movement had so addled her brain, and the, you know, the hunger strike medal is a symbol of her uh, uh, being addled, uh, that uh, you know, it just destroyed her, and this is, this is why she committed suicide. Let me see what else I can describe. Oh, uh, these illuminated manuscripts, they're beautiful. They are hand signed by uh, uh, Emmeline Pankhurst, uh, hand inscribed at the top. They're, the names uh, are in Gothic are, are at the top. This was given to prisoners, all prisoners, uh, who are WSPU uh, members once they got out of uh, uh, prison. It's a beautiful thing. I have a story to tell about that, but I won't. Women's suffrage artists, postcards, I told you about the two different uh, suffrage organizations. They did a lot of these postcards. And again, never, never, never underestimate the importance of postcards to the suffrage movement in England. Never. Uh, let's see. These were the, the well, the major uh, journal was Votes for Women. Uh, I have one minute. All right. Uh, Uh, Ethel Smith, uh, the, this is my last uh, anecdote. Ethel Smith was a very famous composer who for two years devoted her entire life to the suffrage movement. And she wrote this thing called The March of the Women. It was not a march, it's you know, the march of the women. She was in prison and outside her uh, cell, she heard some suffragists marching in the courtyard, singing her song. She was so delighted. You know, she's a conductor. Where's her baton? No, uh, no baton handy. They don't give them to you in prison. So what she did, she ran to the bathroom, or not bathroom, but she ran to uh, where her toiletries were, found her toothbrush, and then went to the window and conducted everybody with the toothbrush. I can't go on any further, right? <laughs> uh, all right. All right. Uh, I will be here tomorrow, I have to leave after the show, we'll be here tomorrow. If any of you would like to talk suffrage or any of this stuff, I'd be more than happy uh, uh, to talk to you. Can I introduce two people before? Okay, Lisa Baskin, uh, uh, her collection, uh, Women's History, Women at Work at Duke, fantastic, you've got to see it. And we also are honored to have the great, great granddaughter of Elizabeth Cady Stanton, Colleen, would you raise your hand? All right, now, uh, she's here to keep an eye on me also, so if I didn't get this right, I would catch hell after. Uh, <laughs> all right, so uh, do I got to get out of here now, or do we have some time for some questions? We don't? Oh, we do, all right. All right, Barbara, I'm willing to make a deal. <laughs> well, we're supposed to be starting our next presentation in one minute. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to shake some time off the break, okay? So we'll just have a five-minute break, and we'll allow a few minutes here for questions and answers. But you could have had so-and-so in the back for the break. Uh, well, look, I'll just slide things back a little. Well, my, my friend Stuart Lutz earlier asked for easy questions. I'm going to ask for easy questions also. Yes. Yeah. In, the, in the back row, yes. Another example of the colors that you mentioned throughout uh, is with the American Arts and Crafts Movement, Women artists very often weren't getting respected to do whether oil painting, watercolors, or whatever. So they found another medium, and that was, or another piece to paint, and that was hand painted china. So those same colors appeared on that china 
with obviously the colors indicating the message of suffrage. So it's really fascinating learning that piece too. You know, I, I'm reminded of uh, William Faulkner's short story, A Rose for Emily, where he talks about hand paint in China. Uh, yes, Don? Uh, could you explain the relevance of that other piece, the piece of sheet music, since both oh, German yes. Reed and his wife were long dead? Uh, the uh, Let us all speak our minds if we die for it. I brought that up because it's a lot of people say this is a, an early example of a feminist statement. And uh, no, it's not. It's satirical. Why is it satirical? First of all, it's an English music hall uh, uh, song. Women were not you know, really uh, encouraged to go to music halls. It has an, uh, a male author, not a female author, uh, to it. And you'll notice that the singer uh, is playing the character of somebody called Mrs. Naggett. So that's obviously, it's, it, it's satirical. It's not, uh, that's, why, that's why I put it up. Uh, by the way, uh, America, uh, much, much, much more in the way of sheet music than, than England. Uh, yes. Yeah, okay. Suffrage movement. Yeah, the, uh, I was just saying that the, uh, in my humble opinion, the, his, uh, Ken's book on the uh, women's suffrage uh, postcard uh, is uh, a publication without which it'd be difficult to understand the women's suffrage movement fully. Is that book still available? Do you have it here? Yes, it is. Uh, I didn't bring any copies with me. I brought a copy of my own, uh, own book. If you want a copy, I'm going to be back tomorrow. I can bring a couple of copies. Oh, I, I, I have a copy. Oh, you I, have a copy. I'm, I'm here just to okay. uh, encourage to others to get it. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, both my books are still available on Amazon. Thank, thank you for the publicity, by the way. Uh, anything? Yes. Real quick. I'm reflecting on a morning presentation by Stuart Lutz, where he's pointing out pro and anti-Vietnam ephemera. Was, is there anything like anti-suffrage ephemera, and do you collect that? Uh, yes, I, I, I collect all uh, uh, of, uh, suffrage ephemera. Uh, same thing with suffrage movement that there is with the Vietnam movement. Far, far, far more pro-suffrage than anti-suffrage. There are several uh, male, uh, well, male and female, anti-suffrage organizations that in, in England, but they don't have the money, they di and they didn't produce nearly the kinds of extent of, of, of materials that the, the pro-suffrage uh, 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 people did. They have one major newspaper, but again, it, uh, it pales in comparison to the stuff that the suffragists put out. Okay. I, 